input. In this video, we're going to learn how to gather data from the keyboard. Because right now, with what we know, we can make a cool program that calculates 7 plus 5, and every time it would tell us 12, we run it again. It tells us 12, we run it again. It tells us 12. That's kind of boring. But if we had a program that said, hey, give me a number, and you enter 8, and then they say, hey, give me a number, and you enter 14, and it says 22, that's pretty cool, because next time you program, you run the program, you could enter 35, 35, and get 70. So having programs that interact with the user is a lot more fun than just a program that does one thing every time you run it. Scanner class. The scanner class is used to gather data from a data stream. For now, that data stream will be the keyboard. We, later, we can gather data from files or even the network. Creating a scanner object, because what we're going to be making is a variable, the type is scanner, the variable name is whatever you want, equals new scanner system.in. We're saying, I want to gather data from system.in, which happens to be the keyboard. An example of creating a scanner variable would be scanner keyboard equals new scanner system.in. You do not have to name your scanner keyboard. I like the name keyboard because it reminds me that it's getting data from the keyboard. If I were gathering from a file, I would probably call it from file because it's gathering data from a file. All right, let's move on. Scanner import. Up at the top of your program, if you're working with scanner, the very first line before the skeleton code has to be import java.util.scanner. That lets your file know. Sorry, it lets your file it lets your file know about the scanner class or scanner object and where to retrieve data for how that object works, which was in the Java folder, the util folder, and the scanner file. So this is going to go above your skeleton code, as you'll see in the example. Next int gathers a number, and that number has to be an int value. If they enter 3.8, your program would crash because that's not an integer. We would get possible loss of precision. Next double gathers a number, but it's a double value. Next boolean gathers true or false. Next gathers a single word, which would be a string. Next line gathers text until enter is pressed. So it can gather more like a sentence, and that will be a string. There is no next char. So on a test, if you give me next char, you'll be wrong. It's kind of weird how we gather a character. What we actually do is we say next, parenthesis, parenthesis, that gathers a word, and then we do dot char at zero. What we're doing is we're asking the word that we gathered for the character at position zero, which would be the first character. So just know that when you gather a character, what you're really doing is you gather a word and then take the first letter of that word. And if the user only entered R, then the letter you gathered would be R. Now, if you ask for a letter and they type in Bobo, the letter that would be gathered would be B, and the oboe would not be used. It's a two-step process to gather data from the user. The first one is to prompt the user and tell them you want something. Otherwise, if you just stop and wait for data, the user doesn't know why the program stopped. So the first step is prompt the user that you want something. The second step is to gather that data with a scanner method and then store it into a variable. Gathering data with a scanner variable. The format is variable name equals whatever you called your scanner dot whatever method we want to use. An example, scanner keyboard equals new scanner system dot n. Then we could say string name equals keyboard dot next. That would gather a single word and store it into the name container. We're going to do two examples real quick. The first one is going to sum two numbers and the second is going to take a base and a power and tell the user what the result of that would be. So let's open jcreator. We're in jcreator and now we're going to do our examples. I'm just going to use one file and modify it. After I complete the first example, I'm going to change it into the second example just to save time. So file, new, file, I'm going to do an empty java file, and we're going to call it sample. And we're going to go out to my desktop, samples. And we're going to make a new folder, unit 3. OK. Finish. 
So the first thing we're going to do anytime we start doing a file that requires input is import the scanner, which is going to be import java.util.scanner. What this does, it tells this file where to find data on how scanner works. And that's going to be in the Java folder, subfolder, util, and the scanner file. After we've done that, we need our basic skeleton code that we've been using. Public class sample curly brace curly brace. Inside that we have public static void main parenthesis string bracket bracket args for arguments. The first thing we do when we're working, oh, the first thing we do is our import, then our skeleton code. After we have those two things done and we're planning on gathering data, we need to make a scanner variable. And that should be the first line that occurs in main. Scanner, keyboard, again you don't have to call it keyboard, I just like the name. New, scanner, system.in, which means the data is coming from the keyboard. Now I want to get two numbers, add them together, and print, print it in a pretty way. So let's go ahead and get started with that. When you're gathering data, I recommend using print and not print line. So enter a whole number, telling the user that we want something that is an int value. And now let's store it. int num1 equals keyboard.next int. And now I'm going to be pretty lazy. I copy and paste all the time because it saves time. So control blam. I'm going to say instead of enter, an, an, enter a whole number, enter another whole number. And I'm going to store it into num2. And notice we're using next int because that gets an integer value. Now let's create a variable to store the answer. int sum equals num1 plus num2. System.out.print. And I'm just going to go ahead and use a printf here. I don't really need any formatting, but I just like, I like how it works. Percent D plus percent D equals percent D. I've flagged three locations where decimals need to be inserted. Decimal integers, num1, comma, num2, comma, sum. Let's compile this and see if it works, and we'll go into how it's working. Scroll down some. It compiled successfully. So now let's pull this up. <clears throat> What happens is I say enter a whole number and this pauses waiting for keyboard input. That's why the cursor is blinking. Five. Enter another number and then it pauses and I enter eight. The eight is going to be stored into num2. Later when I go to print, it's percent %d, that's going to be num1, the five appears there. Space plus space, percent %d, that's where the eight appears, it comes from num2 space equals space percent d and the value is going to come from sum because that's the third percent and that's the third value so 13. i think this looks very pretty and it was very it was a very short program to write now we're going to change this into one that calculates the result obtained by taking a power a, a base to a power so instead of saying enter a whole number, I'm going to get rid of that because we're going to allow them to enter numbers with decimal places. So we're going to call it double num1, and it's going to be next double. Double num2, next double. And our answer is going to be a double, but it's not going to be a sum. It's going to be, let's just say result. It's not num1 plus num2. It's math dot pow! And it's going to be, let's rename these. I don't like that one. Let's call this base. And this expo. Because it's the base and the exponent. Base, comma, expo. And when I display the stuff, it's no longer percent %d. It's percent %f. Percent %f. Percent %f. And you know what? Let's put two decimal places on everything. Two decimal places look pretty. But it's not plus, it's a power, so we're going to use the little caret. 
and this should be base expo and result. So now when I run it, just so I can show you what's going on, let's do five point lots of junk, eight point lots of junk. When we get our answer, it rounds everything to two decimal places. So here where it says 5.5, .5, it's because it was 5, 4, the 6 rounded up. So 5.5. .5. Carrot, 8.46, the 6 rounded up again. We take those. When we do the math, it uses the real numbers, and it comes out to this value. And this 8 was rounded. I don't know if it was rounded up or down because I didn't see the full number. 